Hi, I'm Peter Osborne and I started Osborne Publishing uh, almost exactly 40 years ago in 1973. When I came into children's publishing, which I did incidentally when my wife rang up and said, you're going to be a father, which got me going, I was faced with some curious problems. I didn't know anything about children's books. I was a magazine publisher um, and I was given the job by my boss, who was the boss of a big conglomerate, of just going downstairs, finding a job in our educational publishing department if you want to do something with children. And I did, I think it was two floors, I went down and found myself in an educational publishing company called McDonald, and I managed to invent a whole series of little non-fiction books for children in schools who were doing a new, then new method of learning called uh, Centre of Interest um, Education. The idea was that children should sit in small groups and study small topics with small books and there were no small books so I invented a series of books called McDonald Starters that was hugely successful in schools. It also sold quite a lot of copies in foreign languages rather to my surprise and everybody else's and I did well and was promoted and promoted and one day my boss said to me Peter has things and I said pretty good and he said what do you want to do next and I said well you know I'd really like to start my own publishing company so amazingly he said if you need the money um, I'll lend it to you don't need to go to the city of London so I had a lot of money on loan and went off and took a very small office in Covent Garden and asked myself, what on earth am I going to do? Because, you know, I've been very successful as a, an educational publisher, but I don't know anything about mm, the real world of um, children's books, which is mostly, of course, for homes. So I sat and sat with my one assistant and we smoked and smoked. And in the end, we said, I know, or we know, what we'll do is we'll do information books of the type I had previously done for schools, but we won't do them for schools, but for homes. Well, we thought, how on earth do you do things for homes? Because in schools you have, in a sense, captive audiences. Children have got to do what the teachers tell them. In homes, there's no such thing as compulsion, or at least not of that kind. So I thought, well, I know what we'll do is we'll go into competition directly with the media that we think, I think, children actually prefer to books. We're talking about 40 years ago and things were very different then. And I had always thought that children actually preferred magazines, comics and television to books. So, what do we do about that? And we thought and we thought and we thought and we got in designers and illustrators and in the end, we came up with a kind of children's non-fiction book that nobody had actually done before. They were large format books, floppy like magazines, but they also had internally characteristics of comics such as hand lettering and speech bubbles. And like television, there was a lot of step-by-step -step little boxes, but always had little curved corners, very like TV sets. And the, I thought, best of the books that we did in this completely new style, then anyway, completely new style, was called Spycraft, which was a terribly funny book, all about little black hat spies and general sort of slightly subversive people in big hats and big uh, raincoats going around doing spyish kind of things. You know, children love all those decoding and special message techniques and all the things that go to children. Spying is a wonderful world of fun. I know it's not in real life, but for kids it's a, one of their favourite fantasies. So out came Spycraft and five books in the same style and suddenly we'd done it. It was a huge success. We were serialised in one of the uh, weekend colour sections and in the Washington Post no less and suddenly we had arrived on the scene as publishers of entertaining children's non-fiction books in a completely new style. And that became kind of Osborne style and for 10 or so years we brought out lots of books using the same uh, techniques of competing with the other three media that we thought children preferred and there were, uh, you know, 
after 10 years or so, there were rotating stands all over the country and bookshops and in a lot of foreign countries as well with lots of Osborne books in this um, familiar, uh, eventually became over-familiar style. Of course, we changed. There was a lot of competition. And since then, we have diversified and grown uh, to the second largest children's imprint in the UK. And we've been translated into an enormous number of countries. But our start was this fabulous book of Spycraft, which we've republished for the sake of our 40th anniversary. Thank you very much for buying a copy. And I hope you go on and buy loads and loads more Osborne books.